Did you know that evidence of surgery has been found in Kashmir from 3000 BC? Did you know that evidence of dentistry have been found in Baluchistan from 7000 BC? This is the first in the series of videos where we talk about the medical science in ancient India. This video specifically focuses on the origin, evidence and the history of medical science of ancient India. So stay tuned and enjoy the episode and I promise you an awesome session of infotainment. Hello and welcome to the third episode of Indican Science. Today, we will trace the antiquity of medical science from ancient India. The echoes of the glamorous traditions of ancient Indian medical science can be traced all over the world. In the ancient world, with the average life expectancy for 40 years, the Vedas and the Upanishads suggest that we should be able to live an active life of 100 years. As we all know, Marco Polo was an Italian traveler who visited India during the 12th century. In his work, he mentions about the good health of Indians. He writes, the Brahmins live more than any other people in the world. And this comes from little eating and drinking and great abstinence which they practice. Another example is of Claudius Alenus, who was a Roman author of the 2nd century. He compares the Indian drugs with Egyptian drugs. He writes, on one hand, Egyptian drugs repel and suppress sorrow for a day, whereas the Indian drugs cause the man to forget his troubles forever. Another example is of Roger Bacon, an English philosopher from the 13th century. In his works, he writes, the Indians are healthy without infirmity and live to a great age. And I can go on and on and on. Now, let's trace the antiquity of medical science from ancient India. Search for its antiquity takes us right back to Indus Valley. The earliest evidence of medical knowledge in the Indian subcontinent is from Mehrgarh. Mehrgarh is an archaeological site which is located in Baluchistan of Pakistan from 7000 BC. There, several bodies were found with cavities in their molar teeth. On further examination, it was noticed that the holes were smooth and concentrated. Such holes were unlikely to be caused by bacteria. The holes were also perfectly fine with diameter of 1.3 to 3.2 mm. These are evidences of dental feeling, a practice that is still used today to prevent tooth decay. These kinds of cavities were made by instruments such as bow drills or flint drills, which too have been found in those locations. These instruments were used to drill holes in precious stones such as lapis lazuli and can also be used to drill holes into the enamel of the teeth. Now let's talk about another interesting find. In the archaeological site of Kalibangan, which is dated from 2900 BC to 1900 BC, a child was found with a swollen head and three small holes in the right temporal region of the skull. The swelling was due to accumulation of excessive fluid in the brain cells and the holes indicate that the surgeon of Kali Bangan has bored them to drain out the excessive fluid. There was also a black line joining two of the holes, which indicate that the treatment included desensitization of the nerves by marking them with fine heated instrument. The method of boring holes in the skull to drain out excessive fluid is known as refination. This is something that is still used today by modern day doctors to drain out the excessive blood during brain hemorrhage. Such skulls were also found in other archaeological sites, for example, in Barza home in Kashmir and also in Lothal of Gujarat. Traces of shampoo usage too have been found from an Indus Valley site of Banawali, Haryana from 2700 BC. In Banawali, traces of a mixture of shikakai, amla and soap nut have been discovered. Literary sources of medical knowledge can be traced right back to the Rig Veda. The Rig Veda mentions an interesting story of Queen Vishwala. Queen Vishwala had lost one of her lower limbs, that is legs, in a battle. The Ashwin Kumaras performed a surgery and gave her a leg of iron and she continued fighting the next day. There is also another verse in the Rig Veda that mentions physicians and their respectable position in the society. The verse states, He who stores herbs is like a king amongst a crowd of men. Physician is that sage's name, fiend slayer and chaser of disease. In Atharva Veda, we find significant mentions of human anatomy, organs and bones. It contains several mantras and chants against a variety of diseases 
like fever, jaundice, leprosy, etc. According to Indian traditions, Ayurveda is said to have evolved from the Atharveda. Now, in Ramayana 2, we find a mention of Rajveda in the kingdom of Ravan. When Lakshman had cut the nose of Shurpanaka, Ravan had asked his Rajvaidya to treat her. There was also a mention of Aushati Parvat or the peak of mountains. Hanuman was sent to the mountain to procure Sanjeevni by the Vaidya when Lakshman was fatally injured. Classical Ayurvedic texts describe Ayurveda as Ashtanga, which means eight limbs. The eight limbs of Ayurveda include different branches such as general medicine, surgery, eyes, ears and nose, gynecology, obstetrics and pediatrics, psychology, toxicology, rejuvenation and virilization. Ashtanga Ayurveda is mentioned in the Mahabharata when Narada has a conversation with Yudhishthir and inquires whether his royal physician is well versed in Ashtanga. Medical science was taught in the University of Takshila which flourished from 8th century BC to the 5th century CE. One of the alumni of Takshila was Jivaka, who was a physician of Rajdriha under King Bimbisar. According to legends, Jivaka has treated Lord Buddha. He is also credited with treating King Pratyut of Ujjain from Chandis. Jivaka had studied medicine in Takshila for seven years. His surgical prowess is also well known. A merchant suffering from head disease was treated by Jivaka. Jivaka tied the patient to his bed, cut through the skin of the skull, drew apart the flesh and took out two worms from the wound. And then he stitched the skin and anointed it with some ointment. Another alumni of Takshila is Charak. Charak is considered the father of medicine in India. His famous text, Charak Samhita, is considered the most fundamental text of Indian medicine. It mentions the treatment and cure of more than 40 diseases, such as asthma, epilepsy, hemorrhoid, etc. Charak Samhita is dated to 3rd century BC. However, Charak mentions that his work was based on an earlier text called Agnivesha Samhita. Agnivesha Samhita is supposedly compiled by sage Agnivesh and is dated to 6th century BC. He further mentions that the foundations of Ayurveda was laid by the six disciples of sage Atreya, namely Agnivesha, Parashar, Bhela, Harita, Shatrapani and Jatukarna. They founded the six schools of Ayurveda. These texts are either lost or do not exist in their original form. Another text which is considered the foundation of ancient Indian medicine is the Shushrut Samhita. Shushrut Samhita is dated to 6th century BC and Shushrut is considered the father of surgery. While Charak Samhita talks about the principles of Ayurveda, general medicine, diseases and their cure, Shushrut Samhita talks about the complex surgical instruments such as knives, scissors, probes, scalpels, bone nippers, etc. He also talks about the complex surgical procedures such as incision of tumors, removal of hernia, amputation, removal of ulcer, caesarean section, cataract surgery, etc. These two texts form the foundation of several other works on medicine that have been produced by scholars throughout the ancient and medieval times. Nananda University, which flourished in the 12th century, also taught medical science. Nagarjuna was an alumni of Nananda University from the Deccan region. He produced works on Ayurvedic Rasayana or alchemy. Chinese traveler Idri and Zhuan Zhang mentioned the works of Nagarjuna being taught in Nananda. Other scholars of ancient India who produced works on medical science include Vakvata from 8th century, Mandhava from 9th century, Ravi Gupta from 10th century, Chakrapani Datta from 12th century and Dalhana from 13th century. There existed a robust medical system with well-developed and well-organized infrastructures such as hospitals and pharmacies. The inscriptions of Ashoka from 3rd century BC refers to the cultivation of medicinal plants in his kingdom. He also refers to separate hospitals being built for humans and animals. Charak Samhita talks in details about the structures of hospitals and pharmacies. Chanakya's Arthashastra mentions about the penalties and punishments of physicians in case of fraud, negligence or carelessness. Shushu talks in detail about the preservation of dead bodies to understand the human anatomy. Fahim, who visited India during the 4th century, also talks about the elaborate medical infrastructure during the Gupta Empire. These instances give us a glimpse of the prowess that ancient Indians have achieved in the field of medical science. 
In fact, there are numerous instances of how ancient Indian medical science has influenced the medical knowledge of different cultures all over the world, such as in China, Arabia, and in Europe, and has directly or indirectly influenced modern medicine. Maybe this is why Said al-Andalusi, the Spanish scholar from the 11th century, wrote, the Hindus have surpassed all the people in their knowledge of medicine. In our next video, we will talk in detail about the medical system of ancient India, their achievements and their contribution to modern medicine, a glimpse of which we have already seen in this video. So stay tuned for our upcoming video. Meanwhile, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. Also, feel free to check out our previous video on the board games of ancient India and the origins of Manchatantra. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you in the next video.